So connecting with God, relatively important thing to do. I mean, a lot of people. Yeah, you would. <laughs> or at it saying seems like it's it would be pretty important. The it? point of life, or it's, it's definitely you know Swedenborg. He's coming back with all this information and saying you know opening up to this connection is is what we're here doing. Yeah. So you know obviously I'm interested in in what insight. Swedenborg had into yeah. how the whole thing works. And he actually breaks it down into, we've been talking about the spiritual world and the physical world. He says it happens differently for angels who are in the spiritual world mm. versus for us here in the physical world. Wow. So I want to start with uh, what he has to say about this, how this connection functions between angels and God. So this is from Divine Providence 29. I mention this to show how the Lord's union with angels and their apparent mutual union with the Lord take place. All the angels turn their faces toward the Lord. The Lord looks at them in the forehead, while the angels look at the Lord with their eyes. This is because the forehead corresponds to love and its desires, and the eyes correspond to wisdom and its perceptions. Still, angels are not turning their face toward the Lord on their own, the Lord is turning them toward Himself, and doing so by flowing into the love of their lives. He comes through this into their perceptions and thoughts, and that is how He turns them. This circle of love to thoughts and of thoughts from love to love occurs in all the functions of the human mind. We can call it the circle of life. There's got to be a pretty fundamental process to get called the circle of life. Yes. And there you see really. again, this, that there's a particular principle that is consistent throughout how the spiritual things works. It happens in little bits in your mind, mm. and it's the way that God is, is connecting to you. And several things about that quote are mind-boggling to me. First of all, just the, the nerve to say, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, <laughs> the relationship between God and the angel, how, how, exactly how that works. Here's Almost the mechanics. Sort of mechanically, right, right how that how that operates and everything. So it's just amazing. And I don't know that I know exactly what he's talking about, but it's amazing that he's saying it's almost fractal that on all levels yeah. that's going on in, in some sense, that sort of cycle. It's also very moving to me that we may feel in the course of our earthly lives like we're we're seeking God and we're pounding on the door, you know, we're praying yeah. and we, we want this or we need that and everything like that. But this quote kind of makes it clear that, oh no, really, the Lord is the active party and He's turning us toward Himself. Well, what we think is us trying to find Him and we may or may not be able to. It's like He's, he's when you get to that angel level at least, yeah. you know, He's doing that. He's the active party. That is cool that it's not, hey, can I please get on your radar? It's that, it's that He's trying to get Himself on our radar. He's, he's doing it, yeah. And look at right. the, the asymmetrical nature of this connection. You'd think that... Yeah, right. If you're Wouldn't gonna, it be like eye to eye or something, yeah, right? You so, just yeah. stare into God's eyes and that's how you really get to know each other. But Swedenborg is saying, no, there's, there's <laughs> a correspondence here that God is coming in through the place that symbolizes love, whereas we're looking from our understanding back to God. Mm. Uh, and it's that you could get the sense, wait, so are you just sitting there kind of staring at each other the whole time, but the way that spiritual positioning and distance works is such that you can be doing something, living an active, fulfill, fulfilled life where you're do, you know, completing tasks and doing complex motions, but yet somehow on a fundamental level, you're always facing the same way. That's right. He says even four angels can be talking to each other like this, and they're all facing the Lord. You know, yeah. It's just a factor of how geography works in that world because it is about your love and your attention and so on. Yeah, yeah and they'll often say, oh, this is hard to describe because this stuff is, is pretty far out of our normal realm of thought. Yeah. But then again, when someone's trying to describe to me why time slows down at the speed of light physically, it's it, weird. It, it gets pretty heady there too. So yeah. if they're, you know, it's hard for you and I to, to plumb this and know if it's how it really works, but how it does really work is probably going to be complex and, and strange, mm. just like this. And how about, you said for angels, but like, for us, right, right. When we're here on Earth, like, do we just not have a connection? Or? No, we, th that connection can be happening here. And uh, Swedenborg talks about it in Divine Love and Wisdom. Do you want to give this one a go? Sure, sure. Divine Love and Wisdom, one thirty-seven to one thirty-nine. It is the same with us. If we constantly keep the Lord before our eyes, which happens if we are engaged in love and wisdom then it is not only our eyes and faces that turn to Him, it is our whole mind and our whole heart. That is, it is everything in our intentions and minds and everything in our body at the same time. 
This turning toward the Lord is an active turning. It's a kind of lifting up. We are actually lifted into heaven's warmth and light, and this is accomplished by an opening of our inner reaches. When these have been opened, love and wisdom flow into the deeper reaches of our minds, and heaven's warmth and light flow into the deeper reaches of our bodies. This results in a lifting as though we were brought out of the mist into clear air or out of the air into the ether. Further, love and wisdom, together with their warmth and light, are the Lord with us, the Lord who turns us toward Himself. This active turning toward the Lord comes from love and wisdom together, not from love alone or wisdom alone. To always in conjunction there. And I think about um, near the beginning where he says, if we constantly keep the Lord before our eyes. And what does that mean? What does it mean to keep the Lord before your eyes? And I think about the qualities that make up God, which is ah. this universal love for right. all, the want, wanting to serve everyone, the, the good and the true, that if we keep those sort of in our mind's eye, you know, it said that when you picture someone, they're in the mind's eye. If we picture those qualities, which are probably our best real picture of the Lord, right. and live a life according to it, that's got to be what, what creates this kind of connection. Glim glimpsing that love, you know, in the birth of a child, or yeah. the, the, the circumstances of someone's passing into the other world, or just the way events, you know, go in, in their lives. When you stand back, you can see that, that mercy and that, that care that the Lord, Lord provides. And, I, I agree with you, and the eyes there have to mean our spiritual eyes, but it's our conscious focus, isn't it? It's yeah. like, where are you consciously focusing? Are you looking for this? Right. Are you looking to see those qualities, that, that the order that's present in the universe throughout? And, and give a little time to that, because if you just go on autopilot, your eyes, your spirit, which is what you're thinking about, just goes to like one uh, relatively superficial <laughs> concern to the next one, to right. the next one. But if you take some time to, and it doesn't have to be that, oh, I'm not paying attention to anything of the world, I'm just thinking about God. No. But if you're driving on the road, you can be thinking like, how do I make it so that I'm a good citizen here, that I'm not too close to someone, that I'm not too slow, not too fast. You know, that, that is, in my mind, that's focusing on the yeah, Lord there. Yeah, that's right. And Swedenborg talks a lot about how that can be operative in the, the work that you do right. or whatever, right, right. you know, the, the main pursuits of your life, in your relationships, as you say, and in other ways. Yeah, so, so cool to think about. We can get that kind of connection started here, that if mm. we're thinking about God in that way, thought brings presence, and the more we learn to love that kind of life, the more we're getting that union, you know, living the same house.